Hello, Nick here from Technovo and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm in my living room and I'm looking at the Sony HT8500 soundbar. Their budget Dolby Atmos soundbar, but is it any good? We'll find out soon, but before that, please show some support for the channel and help us grow by hitting that subscribe button and like buttons. <laughs> So this is Sony's entry level Dolby Atmos DTS-X all-in-one soundbar, which currently retails for around 300 pound here in the UK. It's a 2.1 system with built-in subwoofers and includes Sony's vertical sound engine. First impressions of the soundbar are very positive. The soundbar measures in at 890 millimeters long, 64 mil high and 96 mil deep, which sits very nicely under my 50 inch TV. It has a leather effect finish to the top and sides with a metal grille to the front. To the top is a number of indicator lights and touch sensitive buttons. There is a remote control too, which makes things a little bit easier, but there is no display, which is one of the negatives, but more on that later. As for connectivity, it has two HDMI ports to the rear with one being ARC, a single optical port and it's Bluetooth 5.0 as well. The soundbar can be wall mounted and a paper guide for fixing is included in the box. Setup was pretty straightforward, but there are a number of things you need to consider when doing so. By that I mean only certain audio formats work with certain cabling arrangements. If you want to utilize that Dolby Atmos or DTS-X, you need to use HDMI eARC or optical cable, but the latter will only give you Atmos, not X. If you go for standard HDMI, you will not get access to Atmos or X, but we'll be able to use um, older formats like standard Dolby Digital and DTS. Go for Bluetooth connection and you're stuck with AAC format. For my setup, I used a HDMI cable from TV into HDMI eARC on the soundbar and then added my PS4 into the soundbar via the spare HDMI slot. Now onto the first dilemma. Atmos or X content and how you're going to get that. There are limited ways you can use Atmos or X right now and you need a specific device to access them. These include 4K Blu-ray players and some newer TVs, Apple TV 4K, Xbox Ones, Fire Stick 4K and SkyQ I believe. Without a compatible device and the correct cable arrangement, the soundbar won't truly receive Atmos or X audio formats. The second issue is actually finding the content to watch. Sure, there is a fairly large variety of 4K Blu-ray discs, but content is limited on major streaming services right now. Amazon and Netflix, they only offer a handful of movies or TV shows that offer the Atmos or X audio experience. As for performance, it's great, and it's brought so much joy to me watching my movies over the last few weeks. The dialogue in movies is crystal clear and actually loud enough so you can hear what people are saying. The bass is very good considering this doesn't come with a separate subwoofer. The bass blends in very well and although it didn't rumble my sofa, it definitely packs a punch. It's advertised as a 2.1 system but in fact you can clearly see four drivers from the front, left, right and two central bass drivers. Overall it's a well balanced powerful soundbar at the mid to high volumes. Along with Dolby Atmos and DTS-X support, the H8500 includes Sony's vertical surround engine which allows the soundbar to process standard audio and upscale it to simulate a 7.1.2 surround sound effect. I'm just going to say it now. This does not offer a true Atmos or X experience. Nothing ever truly will without speakers above and to the rear of the subject. That being said, I was actually surprised when I played one of the Atmos sample videos created by Dolby that there was actually a sense of surroundness or directional sound around me. It did a fairly good job of simulating audio rotating around me, but lacked that vertical throw. A lot of people say Atmos or DTS-X in a soundbar is a bit of a gimmick. I disagree. It's definitely added to the surround sound experience for me, but I know it's not true Atmos or X. It's not an ideal situation and won't represent the quality very well, but here is some sample footage of me enjoying one of those samples. This is Dolby Atmos. 
the world's first object-based cinematic audio. With powerful moving audio that transcends from channels to moving around you with pinpoint accuracy. Whether the soundscape sits the mood of the scene. captures the full extent of nature's fury. The HT8500 is not just for movies. It caters for general TV, sports, and gaming too. With a touch of a button, you can select one of these preset profiles and the sound will change to suit that content. There is also a night function, so if you have little kids and you don't want to wake them up, hit that and it brings everything down a bit so it's not so distracting. I also listened to some music via the Bluetooth option and it was good. And it would fill my living room very easily, but it's very directional. By that I mean you have to almost sit directly in front of it to get the best audio experience. If you're sitting elsewhere in the room, it's perfectly fine, but it's not as good. Now I have a couple of gripes. The first being the bass. Although I said it was very good earlier, and it is at the mid to high volumes, but not at 100% volume. Max a volume out and the soundbar cannot deliver enough bass, and it's very obvious. That's when you really need a separate subwoofer. Secondly, the controls and lack of a screen. The indicator lights work, but it's very easy to get in a muddle and you can get lost in the process you're trying to undertake. Some of the finer audio configurations require a number of button presses and it's not the easiest. Lastly, it turns itself off. I would regularly pause whatever content I'm watching, go back to it after 15-20 minutes, hit play, the content will play, but there is no sound. I then need to turn the soundbar back on as it doesn't sense the audio signal like it does when you first turn the TV on. While I was researching this and before I purchased, I read about audio sync issues where there would be a second or two delay. Um, I've not had that issue, touch wood. But there is um, an AV sync option which allows you to adjust the timings. I've not looked into it too much as I haven't needed to, but it's good to know and if the problem comes up, there should be an easy solution. To summarize, I think this is a cracking soundbar and at 300 pounds or less, it's worth every penny. Sure, it's not perfect and of course there are better soundbars out there, but at this price point, it will take some doing to beat it. Yes, the Dolby Atmos and DTS-X is a bit of a flop, but it definitely does add something to the experience. It's just not a true representation of the multi-speaker, multi-directional experience you associate with those titles. If you stuck around till the end of the video, thank you very much. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with all our latest tech and gaming videos.